Hi everybody and welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here with me today for our second day of reading together this week. I'm Miss McDonough and I teach third grade at Hawthorne Elementary near Columbia City. I really miss my students and I know that your teachers miss you as well. Now, the last two weeks we've read about flashy fantastic rainforest frogs and we read about the habitat explore the desert and we practiced stopping and wondering and asking questions as we read. We also did that yesterday as we went to the North Pole, the Arctic region, and read about polar bears. And we stopped and asked questions and wondered as well as told ourselves what fascinating facts we've learned about the polar bear. We're going to continue to do that today as we finish the book. Let's go ahead and jog our memories. What do you remember from yesterday that we learned about polar bears? Go ahead and think and then share out loud with somebody at home or in your own private brain in whatever language you feel most comfortable about. What do you remember about polar bears? Do that now. Thank you and welcome back. Now, I remembered yesterday that I'd asked the question, how big are polar bears? And I found that answer. It said males can weigh more than 2,000 pounds, usually around 1,700 pounds. Now, I also learned that most uh, polar bears are born at, to their mother as twins. That was really fascinating to me. I still have the question, what do polar bears eat? So I'm hoping to find more about that today um, as we read. What did you remember? Was it something similar or different? What questions do you still have? Hopefully some of them will be answered as we uh, continue our journey in the North Pole and find out about polar bears today. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's see where we were. Ah, this is where we left off. We learned that polar bears are not really white. I'll read the last part of this. The bears look like they are white only because their clear hair reflects the light. Polar bears are patient. Polar bears are very patient hunters. Their main diet is the ringed seal, which is the most numerous seal in the Arctic. They can smell a seal's breathing hole in the ice. Then they wait silently until the seal surfaces at that particular hole. This can take a very long time since each seal has 10 or even 15 different holes to choose from. Sooner or later, the seal returns and the giant bear grabs him. Polar bears are hungry. Polar bears like to eat only the blubber and skin of the seal and usually leave the meat, which is in turn scavenged or eaten by Arctic foxes. A bear can eat 100 pounds of seal fat at a single sitting. Polar bears need to catch about one seal a week in order to stay strong and healthy. When the opportunity presents itself, which is rarely, Polar bears will even hunt walruses and beluga whales. Polar bears are tough. Polar bears are masters when it comes to enduring blizzards and cold weather. They have lots of warm fur, even on the bottoms of their feet, but equally important is their four inch layer of blubber. With this combination of fur and blubber, almost no heat escapes from their body, even when the Arctic, tem Arctic temperature drops to minus 50 degrees Fahrenheit. A polar bear's body temperature stays at a steady 98.6 degrees, the same as ours. Their compact or small ears and very short tail further prevent any heat loss. What did you learn about polar bears from the part I just read? And based on what you've learned, what questions do you still have? Go ahead and stop and think and then share out loud with somebody at home or in your own private brain. Do that now. Thank you. Let's look at some of the things I was wondering. Um, well, earlier I had asked, what do polar bears eat? 
And now I found out that they eat mostly the ringed seal, but that even on occasion, they'll sometimes eat a beluga whale. That was fascinating to me. I also had the question, how do they stay warm? I found out they have a four inch layer of blubber and fur on their feet to help them stay warm in this really, really frigid environment. What did you learn and what questions do you have? Were they similar or different to mine? Let's go ahead and read the next section. We're gonna finish the book now. Okay, where we left off, it said a polar bear's body temperature stays at exactly 98.6 degrees, the same as ours, or warm-blooded. Their compact ears and very short tail further prevent heat loss. Polar bears are fast. No other four-legged animal can swim as fast as the polar bear. They swim at a rate of six miles per hour. That's quite a bit faster than they generally walk. They can do this because of their dinner plate size front paws, which are webbed and work like paddles. They use their hind legs only to steer. Their great swimming ability gives them their Latin name, Ursus Maritimus, which means sea bear. They are also good divers and can see well underwater. Polar bears are few. Few means not many. Altogether, there are only 20,000 to 25,000 polar bears in the world. These are separated into 19 groupings, which are called subpopulations. Most polar bears, about 15,000, live in Canadian territory. About 4,000 live in Northern Alaska in two separate groups. There are no polar bears in the middle or Southern part of Alaska. Polar bears are endangered. For tens of thousands of years, polar bears were the undisputed rulers of the far north, but now their existence is in jeopardy. Jeopardy means it's in danger. Climate change is their single greatest threat. When the sea ice breaks up and melts earlier and earlier each spring, the bears find it increasingly or more and more difficult or impossible even to catch seals. The result has been that in certain regions, fewer baby bears are surviving since their mothers are not as well nourished or well fed. Pollution and the disturbance caused by northern oil rigs and exploration for oil are additional threats. The United States Department of the Interior declared the polar bear a threatened species, the first animal added to the endangered species list because of global warming. Based on what you've just heard, what have you learned and what do you still wonder about polar bears? Go ahead and stop and think and then share aloud with somebody at home or in your own private brain what you learned and what you still wonder. Do that now. Thank you and welcome back. Something that I learned is that polar bears are few, they're endangered. In fact, there's only 20 to 25,000 of them left. So that makes me wonder what else, are, what are we going to do about it? How are we going to fix this and help save the polar bears? Were your wonderings and what you learned similar and different? One last thing before we transition to IDR. What's the most fascinating fact that you've learned about polar bears so far? One, and one question you still have. Tomorrow, we're going to read another text about polar bears called Polar Bears in Peril, which means danger. And we're gonna find out even more about polar bears and maybe some of those questions that didn't get answered will be answered in that text. That text will also be located in your packet if you'd like to follow along from there. Okay, let's go 
ahead and transition now to IDR. Today I'm going to ask you, like always, to read for 25 to 30 minutes in a quiet, cozy spot where you think, think you're going to be uninterrupted. I do have an added assignment for you today, okay? So as you read, you're going to be stopping and wondering and asking questions. But I want you to find one place in your text where you can put a post-it or a self-stick note and jot down that question that you had to help you to write a journal entry. Now the journal entry is located in your packet. Looks like this. It says reading journal on top or a blank piece of paper is fine if you don't have the packet. I'm going to share with you an example of, my, of reading and thinking aloud about a question and then turning that into a journal entry. As you know, I've been reading The Key Collection by Andrea Chang. Now, where I'm at now, Grandma Nini has moved to California and little Jimmy is really having a hard time coping with this. He misses her, he, her house was right next door to his and now he wonders who's going to be moving in there and so forth. I'll read one little part. Oh, and found out that she accidentally left behind the jar of keys. So one of my questions that I wrote was, what will Jimmy do with the jar of keys? And then I'll read this little part to you. Nini's house sold in less than a week. Two days after dad signed the papers, there was a big moving truck in front of it. The movers unloaded about 50 boxes, two cribs, a high chair, and a huge stuffed bear. Guess they do have kids, Jason said. That's Jimmy's friend. Looks like a lot of them. I can't believe all that stuff is going to fit in my grandma's house. So my question is, who will move into Nini's house? And how is Nini doing in California? We haven't heard from her since she left. So based on that thinking, I am now going to do a journal entry. Now your directions for the journal entry will be like always to include the title and the author's name, a little bit about what the text is about, what the question that you wrote on the self-stick note, and then what, if anything, did you find out about that question? Now, sometimes our questions aren't answered yet in the story, and sometimes they never will be. In that case, just write about something else that you learned that is important to the story. Let me show you what I wrote. Okay. Miss McDonough. Today I read The Key Collection by Andrea Chang. Now, when you're writing a title, always make sure you have a capital on each word of the title and underline it. And then I also capitalize Andrea's name. It's a proper noun. Today I read The Key Collection by Andrea Chang. Little Jimmy is having a hard time coping or dealing with Grandma Nini moving to California. Jimmy realizes Grandma left her jar of keys behind. Here's my wondering. I wonder what he will do with that jar. I also wonder how Grandma Nini is doing in California. Now, I didn't find the answers to these questions, but I found out that a new family is moving into Nini's old house. Jimmy is worried his memories of Nini will fade with a new family living there. I wonder who they are and if Jimmy will get to know them. Okay, so as you read today, make sure you have that self-stick note and jot down that question and then follow the directions to write um, a nice journal entry. It's important that we respond and write and think about our reading to understand it at a really deep level. I will be back tomorrow with a new text about polar bears and I'm really excited um, to read that with you tomorrow. Happy reading!